Welcome back, everyone. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's tour of the Middle East has now taken him to Saudi Arabia. He's already made stops in Iraq, Jordan, Egypt, and Bahrain, as well as Qatar. Now all eyes are on an expected meeting with the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. NBC News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Andrea Mitchell is traveling with the Secretary of State. She joins us live now uh, from Saudi Arabia, from Riyadh. Andrea, good to have you with us. Let's first of all talk about any indication as to whether this meeting will take place. Are we expecting the Secretary to press the Crown Prince on his role in the killing of Jamal Khashoggi? Well, I think that the meeting will take place. We think that it will be tomorrow, or most likely tomorrow morning. That is not confirmed yet, so things could change. But as to whether he will press him about Khashoggi, he said that he will bring up the issue. He called it a horrendous crime. But he and the president have not bought into a universally accepted assessment by all of U.S. intelligence that Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince known as MBS, you know you've covered him, that he, for all of his reforms and for all of the big economic plans that he has and his alliance with Donald Trump and particularly with Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, that he was responsible, that he knew before, during, and after the killing. They don't have the smoking gun. They don't have an intercept that says, you know, kill Khashoggi. But because of his relationship with all of the people in this killing party, especially one of his closest aides, with whom he is still reportedly in close touch, this person uh, you know well, uh, know of well, has traveled with him, and uh, gone to him with, the, with him to the United States and to other foreign capitals, and is not really under house arrest, according to a lot of intelligence sources. So uh, it does seem that they have not really responded, and certainly that they have not responded to the world dismay over this. Uh, President Trump keeps giving them a pass. Pompeo is trying to walk a fine line here because of the president's posture, and he has not been harshly critical of the crown prince, but he has been critical of Saudi responsibility. Hey, Andrea, let me ask you about another topic that has cast a large shadow over uh, this entire trip and something that affects a lot of our allies, and that is the Secretary of State's messaging on Syria for all of our allies in the region. It doesn't seem that the administration has been all on the same page when it comes to reassuring our Kurdish allies about what we're doing in Syria, and more importantly, what actually the way forward for us is in Syria. What is the Secretary of State saying to our allies in the region to assure them about that withdrawal? Well, he, what he's saying is that the United States is withdrawing, so he's not contradicting the president's rapid withdrawal. The president said it would be one month, then later in December he said it would be uh, up to four months. We see the early signs of some equipment, perhaps contractors coming out, but not the troops themselves. But what he has not explained and what no U.S. official has explained is how they can meet their commitment to stay and make sure that Iranian boots are, are out of Syria without U.S. troops on the ground and without protecting the best fighters in the field, the Syrian Kurds, whom we trained and we assisted for our proxies there. So it does not add up. And uh, he won't get a lot of uh, arguments in parts of the region because he's against so fiercely against Iran, who is a common adversary, especially here in Riyadh. But it does not make sense to a lot of other allies, mm -hmm. and there are real concerns in Jordan and certainly in Turkey. All right, NBC News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, I appreciate you staying up late for us. I know you have an early start tomorrow morning uh, as well, so thank you. All right, joining me now here on set, Rukmini Kalamaki, New York Times Foreign Correspondent and an MSNBC contributor, and Nayara Haq, former White House Senior Director and State Department uh, Senior Advisor. Rukmini, let me begin on that last point that we were talking about with um, uh, Syria. Sure. Uh, the, the U.S. seems to at least be sending some mixed messaging when it comes to what exactly is happening. You had John Bolton going to Israel and Turkey. He was snubbed by the the Turks, but now you have Mike Pompeo going to the Gulf countries, trying to assure them right. that everything will happen in an orderly fashion. It doesn't seem this administration is clear on what exactly it's going to do in Syria, does it? And I, I would back that up even further. Uh, right before President Trump's tweet announcing this rapid pullout, our, our Kurdish allies were being reassured by Bolton's office that we were going to be there for for the long haul. Right. This is what this is how they were planning uh, the, the future months based on what Bolton's office had said. Then there was a tweet. Then there was the 30 day uh, the 30 day idea. Uh, then another another messaging saying no, we're going to have a, a slow um, uh, pullout. And now all of the confusion that we're seeing between Pompeo and Bolton, it seems to me that it's the commander in chief. 
um, who holds the reins here. Mm. And so, so that seems to be the most important message that is being sent to the world. And that message is that we are pulling out, the timeline being unclear. Uh, Nair, let me get your thoughts on that as, as well. You know, you had the Secretary of State, uh, you actually, excuse me, you had the President make that announcement that he's withdrawing from Syria in that bizarre video at the White House uh, invoking our veterans, even those that have uh, mm -hmm. lost our lives. It's one thing to say that the U.S. entered the Syria war uh, illegally or not on a solid legal footing. It's another thing the way that the U.S. is withdrawing now. Uh, our allies in the region, are they going to have to go it alone from here on out? We've seen some of the Gulf countries starting to reestablish relationships, diplomatic relationships with the Syrian government. And that's what's problematic because under President Obama, there was a very strong effort to bring the international community together um, in negotiations against the Assad regime, which is backed up by Russia. And now it's, a, it, it's making it very challenging for our allies to maintain the line against a, a dictator like Assad. Uh, on top of that, Russia and the, with all the collusion conversations we're having here in the United States, allies are very concerned about the United States being engaged internationally in favor of democracy democracy and freedom of rights, freedom of uh, religion, freedom of the press, uh, when we have a perception of being so closely allied with the Kremlin. Uh, that's on top of that, uh, a speech given by uh, the Secretary of State recently that doesn't really lay out a sense of strategy or purpose or foreign policy rooted in American values and principles. It seems that all of our foreign policy towards the Middle East right now is rooted in what's of the interest, um, whether financial or personal, to Donald Trump. Uh, Rukmini, this administration has made Iran a focal point of its uh, policy in the region. There's been some talk, uh, and I'm sure you saw the Wall Street Journal report, yes. that uh, John Bolton asked the Pentagon to draw up a strike plan. That's against right. Iran uh, following an attack on uh, on the green zone sure. uh, by an Iranian-backed militia in Iraq. How much of Iran has become a focal point for this administration to try and carry out some kind of operation, you think? Are they looking for an excuse? I think that this is this is something that is very important to Bolton. Um, Bolton came in with, uh, with, with this particular policy idea towards Iran. I would make, I would make one caveat on the Wall Street Journal uh, article regarding the September 6th and 7th uh, mortar strikes that, that came close to the U.S. Embassy. To date, we're not sure. Uh, which unit uh, mm. with, within within the Iraqi uh, um, uh, landscape carried this out? It's not abnormal um, when when we believe that a foreign adversary has carried out a strike against uh, against one of our assets to begin looking at possible strike options. Remember Benghazi. Uh, mm. in, in Benghazi, we were uh, the U.S. government was accused of having acted much too slowly. And but do you think that they're simply just looking for an excuse overall when you look at all the big picture policy towards Iran? I don't know about no. that, okay. but but um, but regarding the mortar strike, I think that that was not an unusual move for 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 them to look for. Now, your final thought to you about this: uh, Are we revisiting 2003 with a drum drop excuse to possibly do something against Iran? I think so. That's John Bolton. If he's the one who's really, truly in charge of foreign policy, um, he has come in a very strongly demanding regime change in Iraq. He tried to make that happen. We know how that turned out. And now he's doing the same with Iran. That's part of why the United States, under Donald Trump and John Bolton, has maintained such a strong, hardline alliance with the Saudis because they will be their, their key ally mm. against Iran in the region. Yeah, we know John Bolton has promised regime change as well as Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Rukmini Kalamaki, Nayar Haq, thank you both for your time. We'll be right back.